Hey guys, this uh, video is for the new graduate students uh, 2016 cohort, as you'll be affectionately uh, referred to as. Uh, my name is Doug Darbro. I'm director of the graduate program. Uh, let me tell you, we I decided last year to put up the orientation video instead of requiring you guys to come to campus. Uh, in 2000, I guess 14, I required everyone to come to campus for the orientation session. And I have to tell you, at the end, after about two hours of pretty much providing the same information I'm going to provide in this video, and realizing that people had driven three and a half hours, uh, I, I, I started exploring other ways that we could um, uh, could get this information to you. So, you know, I figure if it's uh, if the videos are good enough to teach you <laughs> to provide your lectures and and, and course content. It's certainly good enough for the orientation session. So uh, let's get this going. Uh, this is an extremely important video. Um, so uh, let's, let, let's make it happen. Uh, the agenda, uh, I'm going to go over briefly the history of our program. We'll um, uh, go over the uh, description of the courses. I'll talk a little bit about the way that we deliver our course content. In the very end, I'll show you how to access your videos and assignments, or at least the way I do it. And uh, I think it's uh, very similar for all the professors. Uh, we'll talk about the summer schedule. That way you can go ahead and um, uh, you know, make family plans if needed. It's a great thing about the delivery of our course content being online is, um, you know, for example, I have a couple of uh, vacations scheduled uh, this summer. Actually, I have three vacations scheduled this summer. And the online content, uh, the online delivery method allows you to uh, you know, to, to balance those things out. Uh, we'll go over an introduction uh, briefly to the uh, graduate faculty. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about our staff. Uh, tips for success. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a beast. It's, uh, it's, it's, it can be difficult, uh, but it's uh, extremely enjoyable, I think, in the way that we deliver our content. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, things that um, uh, I guess I would say characteristics of previous students who have been successful. Uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about a graduate uh, assistantship. Uh, there's an opportunity for that. I have one uh, GA um, uh, remaining that I haven't assigned yet. So I'll tell you about that and tell you how to apply if you're interested. And finally, how do we access videos and assignments? All right, guys, history. Uh, I was actually chair of the math department in 2011-2012, uh, and in about February of 2012, Dr. Paul Madden, who's associate provost at the time, uh, called my office and asked me as the chair if we would be interested, we being the math department, in creating a graduate program, a master's in mathematics, to address the increasing demand of dual credit courses. Uh, there was a change in qualifications at that time. Uh, students, I'm sorry, high school teachers who were going to teach dual credit courses were required to have a master's in mathematics. Yep, a master's in mathematics. Uh, I didn't misspeak there. But what they did uh, about six months later, they relaxed that and said you have to have a master's in content and 18 credit hours in uh, graduate level mathematics. So, and we'll talk about this uh, in, in just a second. You know, how to become a, a, cred a credential, a master's in mathematics, or a master's in an area other than mathematics and 18 graduate hours uh, uh, in, uh, in your content. Uh, so what we realized early on um, is we realized that the working professionals that we would be attracting to our program uh, would most likely be high school teachers. Doesn't mean that everyone that uh, comes into our program is a high school teacher. We have people who are uh, students who are traditional graduate students who live on campus and don't teach high school who are working on their master's in mathematics. And that's a part of our program that uh, in, in the upcoming years uh, we're going to start uh, putting more effort into building that part. But uh, primarily our program was built for high school teachers who were uh, seeking the qualifications to teach dual credit courses. Initially, when Dr. Madden came to me, I had two concerns from a department uh, perspective, faculty interest. Uh, the reason I mention that is uh, our advertisements for the people we had hired at that time 
I had one theme, a commitment to teaching undergraduate mathematics. So I wondered how my faculty would take on the challenge, uh, having you know, knowing that we attracted them to Shawnee State because of a commitment to undergraduate teaching, uh, how they would change in terms of uh, an interest in teaching graduate level mathematics. Because I tell you, it's a lot harder. It takes a lot more time uh, for me, uh, for example, to prepare for my uh, 5500 level uh, applied regression course than it does for me to teach my 1500 course to undergraduate. Second concern I have is uh, sustainability. Uh, it looked like to me that we would ultimately kind of uh, uh, have all the teachers in this area uh, credentialed. So again, it was the reason to expand our online delivery to where we could uh, reach into areas like Cleveland, uh, Dayton, Toledo, um, and, and, and uh, uh, you know school districts uh, in northern Ohio. Well, long story short, we started our pilot, pilot cohort in summer of 2012. I'm happy to report that um, almost all of those who were degree seeking completed their degree in uh, uh, last summer, in summer 2015. Uh, Dr. Maxson and I, Dr. Maxson took over his chair in 2013. Uh, she and I worked very closely to uh, develop the program. Uh, we started uh, late spring 2012 and we uh, actually submitted our program for review to RAGS, which is the Regents Advisory Council on Graduate Studies, for approval in November 2013, at which time our program was approved. Uh, I submitted the accreditation forms to the Higher Learning Commission, and in May 2014 we received accreditation for our program. So we are fully accredited um, as a um, master's level uh, degree granting uh, a program. So no concerns there. Now depending on what your goals are, uh, if you're seeking the degree then there will be 36 hours that you'll, uh, uh, you'll need to successfully complete with a GPA of 3.0 or higher. Uh, and if you're seeking just the 18 hours in the College Credit Plus credentialing, um, the courses you take still come from, from, from the, a subset of these courses. If you are degree seeking, you're going to need to take 27 hours in the content courses. Uh, you're highly recommended to take Mathematical Analysis 1 and 2, uh, Algebra 1 and 2, Abstract Algebra 1 and 2, and um, uh, Applied Regression 1 and 2. So that's six of your nine courses. You have flexibility based on scheduling uh, of what the other three courses would be. They could be Geometry, Complex Variables, Number Theory, probability, and possibly even topology. If you are degree seeking, and even if you're uh, uh, seeking the 18 hours uh, for CCP uh, credentialing, you can still take the quantitative methods courses taught by me. Those are two hours uh, each. And uh, you would only um, uh, enter into the research sequence, the five hours, the three courses in the research, uh, uh, research sequence, if you were degree seeking. So if you're degree seeking, you must complete a capstone project, which is called your master's thesis, which you take under uh, my direction. That's the goals. Uh, if you're degree seeking, it's going to take you approximately 26 months. If you follow the schedule, uh, nine credit hours in summer 2016, uh, five credit hours each in fall and spring, and so on, as I've listed there. Uh, you don't have to follow that. In fact, I have a student who started in 2014 who um, you know, doesn't want to follow that, uh, he, he, you know, that, that schedule. He has children. He, uh, um, he has other plans in the summer. So he is taking one course per summer and maybe one in the fall, none in the spring. And it's totally up to you. Um, but uh, to be credentialed to teach College Credit Plus, you must be uh, making what we call satisfactory progress as defined by me and the administrators uh, at your high school. Okay, so down at the bottom, the College Credit Plus credentialing, you need 18 credit hours if you have a prior master's in another uh, area other than mathematics. Guys, online delivery, um, when, I, when we first started delivering our program and uh, Dr. Maxson told me that we probably were going to deliver this online. 
I didn't think it would work. As I sit here four years later, I have to admit, I think it's better than face-to-face. -face. I really do. I think it's better at the graduate level than sitting in a classroom taking notes from a traditional lecture that's presented on a chalkboard. The reason being, it's kind of hard to stop a professor once they get on a roll teaching. But you can pause. If you get interrupted, you can come back and watch a video later. And when you're doing your assignments, if there's something that you don't remember, you look back at your notes, it's not completely clear, you can go back and watch that part of the video again. Uh, all that said, in 15 weeks, we're required to present approximately 150 minutes of lecture. So that's about 37 and a half hours. Uh, your summer schedule is 11 weeks. So you can see doing the simple arithmetic, you can expect about three and a half hours per week per class of instruction. So guys, summer class expectations, if you're going to take three classes, uh, you're going to watch approximately 10 hours per week of videos, of lectures. If you're taking two classes, it's going to result in about th uh, seven hours per week. Uh, keep in mind that you need time for assignments and you need time for studying. Um, so, you know, this is, uh, uh, you know, most people taking three courses, uh, they find themselves in a situation where this is uh, practically a full-time job, uh, meaning that you're looking somewhere 30 to 40 hours uh, per week that you will uh, need to be able to schedule um, uh, for, for your uh, graduate classes, you know, if you're taking three courses. Uh, summer schedule, I've already said that. Uh, your midterm exams are on June 27th and 28th. At 10 o'clock, uh, the Abstract Algebra 1 um, exam, uh, two hours or I'm sorry, four hours later at 2 p.m. will be the 5500. Uh, I, I think that the uh, Abstract Algebra uh, final will take about two, two and a half hours uh, to give you a little chance to grab some lunch and um, maybe uh, prepare a little bit for your 5500 uh, uh, midterm exam at 2 p.m. At 4 p.m. we have a face-to-face uh, -face orientation session and then the next morning June 28th on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Dr. Whitaker will give his probability exam. Now the cool thing about it is uh, if you live a uh, significant distance and you want to spend uh, the night here in Portsmouth to keep from driving back home and then back the next morning. Uh, we can provide lodging here on campus only in the summer. Uh, our dorm rooms are completely filled up during the fall and the spring. Uh, but for the summer, we can provide lodging. And I think what they do is they charge you $25. And uh, they give you one of the really nice rooms. It's, a, it's an apartment style. Uh, you know, you, you have your privacy and, and, and stuff. But you'll be sharing it more than likely with another uh, with another graduate uh, student of the same gender, okay? Uh, final exams will be uh, August 4th and August 5th. And, uh, you know, I have to commend our graduate faculty. Uh, we're extremely, uh, extremely flexible. So if something's going on where, you know, you've already scheduled your uh, family vacation, you know, the week of the 27th and the 28th of June, just contact uh, Dr. Defcoda, Dr. Uh, Whitaker, Dr. Desario, your professors, and, and uh, request another time uh, to take your exams. And uh, I think you'll find everyone here to be extremely accommodating in situations like that. Uh, what's it going to look like? Well, your session, either one, you're going to take approximately 19 hours. So you're going to take uh, probably, if you're taking the full load and your degree seeking, uh, you're going to take Abstract 1 from Dr. Desario, Applied Regression from Dr. Defcoda, and Probability from Dr. Whitaker. Uh, in the fall, you'll take the follow-up course in Abstract, again with Dr. Desario. Uh, it's a chance you'll take your in intro to quantitative methods under me. And uh, in the spring, uh, you'll start the mathematical analysis sequence with Dr. Whitaker, and you'll take the quant methods 2 and test theory from me. You don't have to do that. Let's say you've got, uh, I, have, I have one student who uh, coaches, I think, softball, softball, and she has a really busy fall schedule. Maybe it's not softball. Um, well, whatever it is. And she doesn't like to take classes in the fall. 
Um, so she she does it. So she takes uh, she modifies her schedule, which is completely legal. Year two, if you're uh, staying on track, you'll take 16 hours. Uh, you'll take mathematical analysis two in the summer, uh, applied regression two under Dr. Def Coda or me, depending on uh, the way that works out. And fall and spring will probably look like that. Guys, year three, one hour, summer 2018, you'll complete your uh, third research sequence course, uh, at which time you'll complete uh, both in writing and orally your master's uh, thesis. And then it's time to party. You'll complete your degree uh, in approximately 26 to 27 months. Uh, you don't have to. I have, uh, a, again, a student now who I think uh, started with, with us in the 2014 cohort. He probably won't complete his degree for probably five years. But he's okay with that, and so am I. Uh, that, that's, that's what's best for him, so that's uh, the, you know, the plan that we're going to work out for him. Uh, administrators, um, Dr. Bauer is our provost and VP for Academic Affairs. Dr. Knapper is the Dean of College of uh, Arts and Sciences. Please don't contact them. Um, always come to me if you have any issue with the graduate program. I'll do everything I can to come up with a solution. Uh, if not, then uh, you're free to talk to Dr. Whitaker. If you don't get uh, a solution to your satisfaction, uh, then it would be time to talk to Dr. Knapper or Dr. Bauer. But um, these are very busy men. It's not their job to oversee uh, our graduate program. That's my job. Uh, Ms. Penny Merritt, she's the Graduate School Center Administrator. You've already been in contact with her through your application process. And at the bottom is Heather Thacker, if I'm being honest. She's the one that runs the show. Uh, she's the one that keeps us all, uh, keeps us all straight. Uh, professors, uh, at full professor level, we have Dr. Blau, uh, Dr. Darbro, me, Dr. Jin Lu Lee, and Dr. John Whitaker. And I've listed the courses that they teach. Again, the beauty, if you want to investigate this more, hit pause. It's always going to be there. Take screenshots. That way, if you like to print things out, you can have it. Uh, those at associate professor level, Dr. Nichols, uh, PhD from University of Minnesota. Uh, Dr. Nichols can really, uh, very talented mathematically, as, as, as all of our faculty. Uh, he can teach really whatever he wants to teach, but he tends to uh, prefer the foundations of geometry. Uh, Dr. Dev Coda is new. Uh, he and Dr. Desario are both are relatively new. In fact, uh, they're, they're both at assistant professor level right now. Uh, Dr. Desario, I'm pretty sure, is being promoted. So uh, probably starting in fall, he will move up to uh, associate professor. All right, gang, tips for success. Prepare to feel overwhelmed. You would think that I would start out by don't be overwhelmed. Well, you will be overwhelmed. It's a lot of work. Uh, graduate level classes, as I found out uh, when, when I went from my undergrad uh, to my graduate program, that transition is not linear. It's not, well, if it's linear, it's got a steep curve uh, or it's got a steep slope to it. Uh, it, uh, it it's, it's just, it's a different beast. Graduate level mathematics is a different type of animal. So uh, second bullet there, explain your situation to your family, friends, and significant others. Uh, uh, you're you're going to be busy, and uh, they're going to want you to probably treat your summers like you previously have, be spontaneous, go to the pool, go to the lake, go outside. You're going to be busy with studying. Um, but... Um, you know, in, in saying that, if you schedule uh, appropriately and effectively, you're, you're going to be surprised at how much free time you will have. But you've got to schedule, you know, somewhere between 20, 30, 40 hours a week, depending on the number of courses that you take. And then, of course, you have the rest of the time to do what you need to do. Uh, treat videos like lectures. Don't skip class. Skipping class is the equivalent of not going to your uh, not uh, uh, accessing the videos and watching them in entirety. Put your phone away when you're on these things. Uh, you're probably on your phones right now. 
texting or looking at Facebook or Instagram or something like that. Uh, and that's okay because this is not high stakes. You're not going to get tested on this stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, treat the videos like you, uh, you would an in-class lecture. Uh, I always found it, uh, um, really, it was kind of required for me that I not, not only took notes in my face-to-face -face class, but I had to go home every weekend and recopy my notes so I can get a second uh, look at those. So that's a little something that you may consider. Uh, form study groups. Don't be shy. Uh, I, I, when I went to graduate school, I thought that everyone else, at first, I thought everyone else is just so much smarter than me because it seems like they're not having any problems at all and they're turning in these assignments. You know, it seemed like, again, they had no problems at all. They were having problems. They were having the same problems that I was having, but they formed study groups and they met as study groups. And it's, um, it's, it's one of the things, uh, I remember I was taking uh, a linear programming class and my first assignment I got back, I didn't do well. So I went to the professor and talked to him about what I could do to, to improve. And he said, so who are you studying with? And I said, well, I'm studying by myself. And he said, Doug, you can't do that. You can't do that. You could do that in undergraduate, but in graduate school, you can't. A lot of people think when you sit at my level, you've got a PhD, well, you must be really smart. Now, you can't be stupid, but uh, I'm not so sure that completing a PhD, and in this case a master's, uh, has as much to do with being overly intelligent as it does with what I call the three, Bs, the three Ps. Be persistent, persevere, and be patient. Uh, I think the first one is the most important. Persistence, I think, is the... Um, underlying quality that uh, all people have when they complete uh, graduate level degrees of this uh, of this level. <clears throat> Guys, registration, uh, you need to register for classes, so go to shawnee.edu and the first time you'll sign into MySSU. Uh, I've already sent an email out describing this, uh, how to set up your student ID and your password. Uh, you're going to set some things, it's going to prompt you through emergency contact information and you're going to sign up for either one, two, or three of the classes uh, that are listed there. All right, uh, graduate assistantship, kind of cool. I have one remaining graduate assistant for next year. Uh, it'll start this summer. Um, the cool thing about uh, the graduate assistantship is it uh, provides all in-state tuition uh, for up to 18 credit hours per academic year. Now, if you remember when I went through the schedule for the first year, uh, it, it was required that you take, not required, but suggest you take 19 credit hours to complete your degree in approximately 26 to 27 months. So if you decide to follow that schedule, you're going to be out of pocket one credit hour uh, for the academic year. Uh, maybe to help pay that, you get an $8,000 annual stipend. Uh, you have to serve approximately 20 hours per week uh, on campus during the summer terms and approximately 12 hours per week during the fall and spring terms. Guys, I'm extremely flexible uh, with those hours, but some of it uh, needs to be spent. Uh, what, 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 one of the um, things that our graduate assistants do is they are involved in the tutoring program, the supplemental instruction program here where you uh, work one-on-one -on -one with students who are uh, in, in developmental math courses and are struggling. Um, or if it, well, if I have my way of it, and I don't know if I'll ever get this, uh, ultimately want our graduate assistants, once they get 18 credit hours, uh, to be able to teach developmental math courses. So I'm working on that, and we'll see how that goes. So guys, if you're interested, submit a letter of interest to me at ddarbro, that Shawnee should not be capitalized. Uh, I don't know why it is, but um, just set a, submit a letter of interest to me. Uh, tell me why you're interested. Tell me characteristics, um, uh, personal characteristics that you think would be um, uh, you know, helpful in this position. So, um, you know, just, just uh, ultimately just uh, sell yourself. Okay, those of you that are seeking college credit plus credentialing standards, 
uh, if you take a screenshot of this, because I'm not going to read it to you, but uh, uh, essentially the, the blue part there tells you how to become credentialed. It's the standard. But because we're kind of in the transition of offering College Credit Plus courses in the high school, uh, not all high schools have uh, high school teachers who have satisfied that credentialing standard. So I want you to focus on the gray box because if you're working, and well, those of you who are starting the program, uh, the gray box is what applies to you. Uh, and in a nutshell, what the gray box says is how you transition uh, with, uh, well, it says transitioning with quality. Uh, what, uh, okay, if you're teaching a dual credit course for Shawnee State, then you are automatically cleared to teach that course. You're automatically uh, qualified to teach that course if you are in our graduate program and you're making satisfactory progress as defined by me. Satisfactory progress, in my opinion, is taking at least two uh, courses per year. Um, now, you're high school principal could come in and say, well, that's not good enough for me, and they could block that, but I haven't seen that happen. They usually take, um, take my recommendation on that. So uh, if you have any questions about uh, College Credit Plus credentialing standards, uh, feel free to contact me. Feel free to uh, contact ODE, uh, and uh, you know, let's uh, get those headed off at the pass. Um, accessing videos. Um, I don't have access to Dr. Defcoda, Dr. Whitaker, or Dr. Desario uh, theirs, but I do have access to mine. So what I want to do now is end this show and show you how I would access, uh, you would access my videos. So I'm going to sign in to my SSU. Over to the left, I'm going to go to Blackboard and click it again. And, uh, you, you know, when you click uh, on this, you're going to see different uh, than what I see because you're not a professor here. But let's just say, for example, that you're a student in my Mass 6620 course uh, in this previous spring. So I'm going to click that and it'll take it to the course. And the way that I upload my videos, or at least make them accessible to you, and I know that Dr. Whitaker and others uh, do this as well. And by the way, they're going to send you an email giving you more specific instructions on how to access their content. But because they all follow kind of this general theme, that's why I'm taking the time here to show you how, uh, how I do it. So I will come over to content. And the way I develop my course is I have it developed by weeks. So you can see that there were 16 weeks because there was a one week uh, spring break somewhere. Yeah, March 7th. So for example, week number one, you would click that and you would see that the class syllabus is there and the first content or the first uh, uh, thing that we covered in this class was MANOVA, Multiple Analysis of Variance. So I would click video one. It takes me to the YouTube site and I press play. So I would make this larger and uh, for some reason you're not hearing me which is perfectly fine probably because I'm speaking here but uh, you would sit back just like you would in the class and uh, watch uh, the video or watch the uh, watch the lecture. So I was doing some cool stuff here called uh, a review of ANOVA which is analysis of variance and then we got into, uh, out here, I got into showing R, uh, how we would use R, which is our statistical software package that we use uh, to, um, to run a MANOVA. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Um, it's um, much simpler this way than requiring all of you to drive, uh, you know, anywhere from uh, 30 minutes to three hours to campus uh, to get the same exact information. So, uh, Guys, don't hesitate to contact me if you have questions. Uh, don't hesitate, I should say questions regarding the program. Uh, if you have questions specific to your class, then clearly you need to contact, uh, contact your professor.
Well, guys, looking forward to getting this semester started. Again, classes start May 23rd, so I, I'm expecting um, that you'll be uh, hearing a lot from your professors later on this week. So, uh, guys, have a good one. Stay in touch. Take care.